Hello everyone. Welcome to this lecture of the course Digital Electronics and Circuits. And in this lecture, we will be talking about basic gates, truth table, and the concept of mean terms and max terms. Right. So let's get started. Basically, we have already seen about and basic operations of an AND gate, OR gate, and NOT gate. Right. So here, uh, let's let's look at it again. So basically, we have looked at operations of AND gate. OR gate and NOT gate. Basically, we said like if output C is equal to two inputs A and B, this is like a two input AND. If C is equal to A or B, this is a two input OR. And NOT gate is like a single input gate where we say C is equal to NOT of A, that is tilde of A. Now let's assume this thing. Let's assume uh, we have a AND gate. Which is a two input AND gate. So basically, the two inputs A and B, and we have an output over here called C. Basically, C is nothing but function of A and B, and this is equal to A and B. How do we reach at this particular conclusion of C being equal to A and B? So basically, we have a something called truth table through which we capture output and its dependency with inputs. So if my A is zero. B is zero. My output of AND gate is zero. If my A is zero, B is one. Output of AND gate is zero. A is one. B is zero. Output of AND gate is zero. And one and one leads to one. So basically, this particular table, which captures the dependency of output with the inputs, is known as truth table. Right? So this is truth table for two input AND gate. This is for two input AND gate. Similarly, for OR gate, we will have something like A, B, and C: 0, Right? So, this is a truth table for a OR gate. And for NOT gate, we have A and C. If A is zero, C is one. A is one, C is zero. This is a basic concept of a Truth table, right? Now let's look at a three input AND gate. So let's assume we have an AND gate which takes in three inputs, right, and generates an output called O. Input is X, Y, and Z. Now, if we start writing truth table for this, we will have something like X, Y, Z, and output O. 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. I'm writing all possible set of input combinations. Since there are three inputs, the number of input combinations would be 2 raised to power 3, which will be 8. So total number of possible input combination is 2 raised to power 8, which is 3, and all the numbers would be from 0 to 7. Correct? And what will be the output for these AND gates? Everything will be 0, except this, which will be equal to 1. So my output, uh, let's assume my output is nothing but is a function, say, let's, let's say f, right? So now, if I have to complement f, what is the f complement? We have usually seen f bar. It will be again a truth table, which will be something like 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0. This in particular case is not of AND gate, and we have a new gate for this, which is usually called NAND gate. Right? Now, we have already seen one example in the previous lectures where we said like uh, a simple term, right? If I pick up any number, say x bar plus y, z plus x bar, we know how to complement it already, right? We will use T Morgan's law and what we will simply do is x bar plus y, z plus x bar, x bar, correct? And what would happen is the truth table for this, whatever we make a truth table for this, the truth table for this complement would be exactly the opposite one for the F1. Right? Now, we have already seen about complementing the expressions in one of the lectures. But let's look at one more example over here, right? Let's assume that function of x, y, and z is nothing but x plus y bar into z plus x bar. What would be F complement in such a case? It would be something like I will I will write it directly, right? It would be something like x plus y bar 
into z whole bar dot with x bar bar. These are two, right? So this will be all of this. So it will become x plus y bar bar plus z bar dot with x. This will be nothing but x bar dot y plus z bar into x. Correct. So this is how complement works, and we saw one example. So basically, if we have a truth table for this particular expression, what we can simply say that truth table for f complement would be a new column uh, where we would be putting, uh, usually inverting all the digits, right? Similarly, let's see one more example for a three input OR gate. Let's assume we have x, y, z, and we have a three input OR gate. This is output, right? So what are the combinations? 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0. Or gate would be something like this will be 0, rest everything would be 1. Right? Similarly, uh, O bar would be nothing but this thing. Correct? Similarly, we have NAND gate and now I wanted to, uh, similarly we have something called, if we have NOT of OR, we will simply call it as a NOR gate. We usually represent NOR gate by, usually write NOT gate is anyways, this is something called as a NOT gate. So this is A, this is tilde of A, A bar and this is a AND gate, we discussed A, B and C and how we represent a OR gate. When we say NAND gate, we simply represent it using this particular nomenclature of a knot over here. This will be NAND. Now this will be knot of OR. This is AND. This is NAND. This is OR. This is NAND. Right? Now let's move to an important concept which is, which is known as sum of products and you will understand in a bit like why we are talking about this when we talk about k maps and stuff so basically it's known as SOP sum of products right uh, uh, there are many equivalent ways of writing a function right we have already seen that how we could uh, represent a function in a complex form then we solved some boolean expression and we saw that how we can reduce a function and express it in a form of a more useful way than others right and SOP is something which consists of one or more terms that are summed together. And when we say summed together, right, it will have one or more terms which are odd together. And other combination is each of these terms, each of these terms. is a product of literal. For example, if I write a function called f of x, y and z, right? f of x, y and z, which is equal to y bar plus x bar by z bar plus x z. What do we have over here? We have a OR operation we have one or more terms which is summed together and each of these terms is a product of a literal. So this is nothing but a sum of products. Right? And how can we represent this particular situation? Let's assume we have a y, we not it. So this is like a y. Then we have a x coming in which we not. Right? And then we have a first term is like y, it goes like this. Then we have x bar. We have y. And then we have z bar. And we have a and kit over here. And similarly we have xz. So basically we will tap a x and z.
and then we order them together. This is my output f of x, y, z. Basically, what we see over here is we have at the end we have a one or more terms which are odd together, which are summed together, and each of these terms, each of these terms, one, two, and three, is a product of a literal. Product of a literal means it's either a little or a AND gate passing through an AND gate where the terms are added together. So we have multiple levels over here. So this is like a level zero. This is like a two AND gates are like a level one. And then this is nothing but a level two. So this is something called as sum of products, right? And if this is clear, right, I want to introduce a new term over here called a min term. Correct? Min term is nothing but a special product of literals. It's a special product of literals in which each input variable appears exactly once. So basically min term is a special product of literals in which each input appears exactly one. So basically if we have to take an example of a three function right a function which is x y and z. So basically how many combinations we have we can have in which each of the input appears exactly one that would be 2 raised to power 3 which will be 8. So basically uh, n input variable has n input variable has 2 raised to power n min terms okay and what all min terms will be there for a function x y z it would be if you have to draw a table right if I write a min term over here and true when and then we have a shorthand also for this right so we have uh, some of min terms so let's assume that we have something like if we have x y and z how many combinations are possible 0 0 0 0 0 1 0 1 0 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1
if there are multiple mint terms, sum of mint terms is a special kind of sum of products. Correct? Uh, so let's assume an example over here x, y, z. So this is let's assume my function is such that we have this thing as 0, 7th bit as 1, 3rd bit as 1, 1, 1, 1. Right? In this case, what can I say? My function c, which is a function of x, y, and z. If this is true when this is true, this is true when these three are true. I can simply say my c z is nothing but m3 plus m5 plus m6 plus m7. So basically what we did, we drew a truth table for a function and we rewrote this as sum of min terms, right? Just by looking at this rows. Over here my C complement would be something like this. What would be my C bar of x, y and z? It would be equal to m0 plus m1 plus m2 plus m4. Correct? Basically C complement will have all the reverse, all the inverted digits, right? So all the min terms which are not captured in C will become part of C bar. So basically what we have done over here is we have written a function as a unique sum of min terms expression. Correct? And just to introduce one more term over here, right? What we can simply see over here is like we can see it's like summation of m, 3, 5, 6 and 7. Over here we can say it's like a summation over min terms, 0, 1, 2 and 4. Correct? We have looked at SOP min terms and uh, sum of min terms as special sum of literals which is like special sum of products. Now we have something, one another statement where we say product of sum. So this is kind of opposite of sum of products, right? A POS will have one or more terms, multiplied together. Right, and when we say multiplied, it's like ended together. And each of these terms is a sum of literals. Each term is sum of literals. Now this is different from product of sum in two ways. In product of, in sum of products, we had one or more terms all together and each term was product of literals. Here we have one or more terms and it together and each term is sum of literals, right? So let's assume we have some function where we say that okay g of x, y and z is equal to y bar x bar plus y plus z bar into x plus z, correct? Now how can we write up, so basically what is this? This is like a term number one term number 2, term number 3. One or more terms are multiplied or ended together and each term 1, 2 or 3 is nothing but sum of literals. There is nothing else. There is nothing like if, if this would have been right something like y bar dot x bar y plus y right that could not have been termed as product of sums. In product of sums it's simply one or more terms has to be ended together and each term is nothing but sum of literals. How do we realize this, right? So if we look at the previous example, we did y gets converted into y bar. This is the first term. Then we need to achieve x bar with y. And then we have something like a z bar. All of these has to be odd together. And then at the end, we have x plus z. So basically x plus z we will have a R grid here and we will multiply all of them together. So basically all of them are ended together. This is my g of x, y and z. So here as you see we have three levels again. So this is a level 1, a level 0. This is a level 1. This is a level 2. Level 2 is a product level. This is a sum of literals level. Okay. Now since we had a term of min term called, 
we had a term called min term for sum of products do we have a, a term so basically we have sum of products and then we have something like min term do we have something similar for product of sums yes we have something similar called max term right and max term right is again a sum of literals where each input variable appears one a function with n input variables will have two raised to power n max terms that is again similar to what min terms is right and basically what the only thing only difference between min term and max term is max term is false for exactly one combination of input if you remember right what was min term min term was true for exactly one combination of inputs so let's let's uh, uh, understand this with an example right let's assume we have a max term for a three input it's false when and then we have a shorthand notation for this so let's assume uh, we have combination of 0 0 0 Zero zero one, zero one zero, zero one one, so on and so forth till one one one. So we need to have a nothing but we need to have like each input variable appearing once, and it has to be sort of sum of variables, and it has to be false exactly for one combination of input. When will this max term be false? If we say it, it's x plus y. Plus z. If it is a or, all of them has to be zero for this to be false. If any one of them becomes one, this will be a true. X plus y plus z will uh, evaluate to a true expression. Similarly, when will this be false? It will be false when x plus z bar, x plus y bar plus z, x plus y bar plus z bar, and the last one will be true when we have x bar plus y bar. Last one will be false when we will have x bar plus y bar plus z one, and the shorthand notations for this is m zero, m one. We have a capital M over here, right? So on and so forth to m seven, right? Now let's look at the example which we took earlier. We had an example where we said we have x, y, and z, and our function c was. M three. This was our function, right? This is what we discussed previously. Where our C complement became M zero plus M one plus M two plus M four. Just to write this function, right? We had something like. We had M three. M five, M six, and seven. This was our function, right? Can we write this function as product of sums? Can we do that? Yes, we can do that. This is false when for each and every combination, right? For a unique combination, and when is this false? When we have combination like simply C S X plus Y plus Z, first one. Then the second one will be equal to x plus y plus z bar. Third one, x plus y bar plus z, and the last one would be x bar plus y plus z. Basically, a C term is could be written as this product of sums, right? Or basically, it could be written as m zero. M1, M2, M4. Similarly, C complement could be written as M3, M5, M6, and M7. Right. So this simply means if we are writing it as a sum of products, C would be equal to M3 plus M5 plus M6 plus M7. Whereas if we want to write the same expression in product of sum forms, C would be the numbers. Which are not present in the min term. That would be the other ones: zero, one, two, and four. So, so this is the main thing which I wanted you to show you, right? So basically, it's just like every min term is a complement of the corresponding max term. This is what you see over here.
this could also be written as m0 m1 m2 and m4 so basically min term is true when max term is false and vice versa which simply tells me that if i have m0 i put a complement to it it will become capital m0 correct so basically if i have uh, let's assume my function is my m0 is nothing but x y z correct and for this to be true my m0 complement will be what correct so this is what we want to i wanted to show you as an example and one more nomenclature i wanted to show you over here we used to reply uh, like basically represent it as like uh, summation of m because it's sum of products and this is products of sum so this could be written as product of sums 0 1 2 and 4 correct so let's have an example i just wanted to recap on two things we discussed we discussed the concept of sum of products and correspondingly min terms being a special kinds of sum of products then we discussed product of sums and we discussed max terms and you will see slowly as to why we discussed this when we looked at look at k maps and similarly we have uh, sop pos and then we looked at truth tables as well right to uh, reach at the some conclusion with respect to summation of products this being product of sums and let's see an example and let's see if we can convert that example and create a truth table for that let's assume that we have a function called f of abc which is nothing but equal to ab plus b bar into a bar plus c bar which means that this is nothing but ab plus a bar b bar plus b bar c bar right now let's try to convert this into min terms so if we have to convert that into min term what we have to do is each literal will has to have unique combination of all the input so basically a b we need to have c also so what we can do is we can simply multiply it with 1 1 can be written as c plus c complement right that's a complements law similarly a bar into b bar could be written as c plus c bar and b bar can c bar into 1 could be written as a plus a bar now if you expand it and open it this right this will become something like a bar b bar c bar plus a bar b bar c plus a b bar c bar a b c bar plus a b c this is nothing but this is like what summation of from m0 this is like 1 4 6 and 7 right m0 is true when all of these are zero then we have one over here right where we have like a bar b bar 0 0 1 then we have 1 0 0 which is false so this is like 0 0 0 this will be true when this is 0 0 1 this is like 1 0 0 4 1 1 0 6 1 1 1 7 correct so basically this is something just to tell you a name right so this is just like we can say this is like a canonical form so boolean expression expressed as sum of products or product of sums it's just like a canonical form this will be like used multiple places where we want to do logical reductions and look into k maps i hope this lecture was useful stay tuned for the next lecture which where we will be discussing k maps thank you